Hello all and welcome back to the Daring Dancer Summit. My name is Judy Meredith and today I have the honor and privilege of interviewing Francesca and Anastasi. Did I say that correctly? Yes, you did. And also, it's a beautiful name. Beautiful name. Um, Francesca is a breakthrough strategist, a business consultant, and a coach mentor. Um, she's the director of the Confidence Institute, and she's a dancer. So welcome, Francesca. Well, thank you. <laughs> and I know that you're in the business of inspiring people. And the listeners who we have listening to our summit, um, they need inspiration and they're overcoming fear. So I'd like to ask you a couple questions along those lines first, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, First of all, I know that you believe it's essential for people to invest in themselves first um, because they can't do unless we invest in ourselves first. And you created this amazing event last year called the Magnificent You Event. Um, so I have to ask you, and this is the question that came to my mind when I was um, reviewing that event, which looked really amazing, wished I had been there. Um, what would you say to people who believe that that kind of self-development and self-focus is selfish? What would you say to them? I think it would be selfish not to focus on personal growth because when you're, when you're bettering yourself, you're making everything around you better. You affect people in a more positive way. And when you don't do that, chances are you're making people around you miserable <laughs> and yourself are miserable. So <laughs> it's really not being selfish. It's actually being uh, giving to yourself and to other people. So it's not about personal development, in, in my opinion, is not just about yourself, but it's about bettering yourself to make it a better world. Because when you're a better person, you act in different ways than when you're not bettering yourself. So um, I would totally scratch the word selfish from self-development that has nothing to do with it. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I just know that I've heard this from so many people. Really? Uh, yeah. Like uh, in, wow. in, in my years over time as being a therapist and counselor, that's come up a lot where I think people feel like, well, I should be caring for other people, not for myself, not realizing what you just said to be so true that when we develop ourselves and our gifts and talents and deal with the issues that we might have within us, we have so much more to give the people around us. So I just really wanted to hear what you had to say about that. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like the, the, like when you're on a plane, you have the oxygen mask, you put it on yourself first before you can help the others. And if you can't help yourself first, how are you going to help others? You can't help others if you're not at the level where you can help others. Absolutely. I completely, That's how I, see it. Yeah. I completely agree with you. And I think it's an error in thinking in a lot of people's and it, it probably a fear-based error in thinking. I think it also may stem just knowing my own personal background. Um, sometimes it's just the way we've grown up with uh, what we've been told that, you know, don't let it get to your health. Don't be, self, don't be, uh, it's all about ego. You want to be like, just thinking about yourself, you not thinking about someone else. So like you said, it is just, we were thinking about it. Uh, if, you know, if someone thinks of self-development, just to be, look at me, look at me, that's not what self-development uh, development is, right? So I think a lot of that thinking stems from what uh, other people may have, um, implied or if, if not uh, directly said that you know why you spend so much money or so much time in all about you kind of thing but if you can't take care of you you can't take care of others absolutely something we learn something our culture teaches us don't be selfish yeah and then we don't learn to tease that apart and really say what is that and what is not selfishness so and truthfully we do have to develop ourselves and do the best we can with that Mm -hmm. So I, I just love that. Um, you mentioned also in an interview that you did, or maybe I read it in a blog post, I don't know, because I researched you pretty well. Um, how can people play big? How can they play big in life? How could they play big? Well, I say playing small doesn't serve anything. Um, sometimes we have big dreams, but we act small. 
And I think that's, we, we think of dreams, we have these dreams and we have this, everybody wants to have a wonderful life. Everybody has this picture of what life is going to look like when you grow up. And everybody wishes to win the lottery and everybody wishes that they could have this dream vacation. Um, but then when it comes to actually putting the actions into it to make those things happen, it just seems so overwhelming that we end up thinking that we don't deserve it the same reason, the same way as we feel that we're selfish if we're working on self-development. So we try to stay in this little bubble, like I don't want to do too much, I don't want to take too much space, I don't want to look like I'm, I'm going for the gold because then people are going to think I'm selfish. So we have the big dreams, but we, we kind of shrink into the, this little um, self-criticism. We, we even, I think sometimes we even think, What's really not happening? We, we imagine what think people think. We think that people think this, but we are not even caring about it. So how do you play uh, big? Um, just go for it. Like, don't let the distractions go. Whatever that dream is, whatever your goal is, um, just do whatever. You, it's funny you asked me that because just this morning I, I posted on my quotes and it basically says, do you have a big, something along the lines of, do you have a big dream? And just do whatever you have to do, even when you don't feel like it, just keep pushing through and you will achieve and your dream will become your goal. That's wonderful. I love your quote. Um, people dream big, but they act small. Yeah. There's a lot in there. And yeah. Yeah. So the universe was kind of prepping you for this question. I'm not <laughs> Yeah, and you know, I think in some people's lives too, they do actually, like you said, we think, well, what are people thinking of me if I'm acting and doing all these wonderful things? And, you know, usually they aren't thinking anything. They're absorbed in their own life. But there are some people, I think it's some listeners out there who probably do have family, friends, people around them who might be intimidated Absolutely. by by them not only thinking big, but acting big. Mm -hmm. Got any advice for those people about how to how to move forward a little bit at a time toward their goals. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I grew up in, around a lot of that where, you know, where I was told, well, why, why work so hard for that? It's never going to happen anyway. Why, you know, that's only for other people. That's not for us. It's not for our kind of people. And uh, my advice for that is, if it's just friends, get a new set of friends. Okay. And, you know, if you really want to be still be friends with people who are negative and trying to drag you back from what you want to achieve, limit your time with them. Okay. Uh, if you are in a situation where you're around family that you can't get rid of. Right. <laughs> 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 My suggestion is to uh, surround yourself uh, with more of the positive people, the more of the positive messages. Uh, you may be in a situation where you don't have these people around you. So that's where we live in this wonderful uh, world of technology where we can, we have podcasts, we have YouTube videos, there's all kinds of stuff online. Um, there, there are libraries, we, we get books. There's so much out there that is positive that we can feed our brain and, and bombard it with more of the positive so that when the negative comes, it's just like dust. Gotcha. Absolutely. You know? Yes. It doesn't have that much of an impact on us anymore. No, because it's really what we feed our brain. So if we, even if we are close to someone who's very negative every day, we can still, we can still um, be stronger than that. We can train our mind to, uh, to overcome the negativeness if we feed it with more positiveness in there. That is such a hopeful message. Mm -hmm. And I know it's been true in my life, and I, and I know it's true in yours from learning about you and the things that you did overcome. And just that overcoming that you said right there was, is phenomenal. Um, but it seems like when you do move forward towards your dreams and goals, and you can validate this, I'm sure, mm -hmm. you start to amass a group of people who share your vision, and then you add people into your life who are there for you did that happen yes absolutely but you have to seek them out it doesn't okay. i personally found that it doesn't always i mean it does happen but it doesn't always naturally happen so um, just moving forward by itself may not be enough you also have to seek out people and that, to me um it's just 
hang around people that are ahead of you, not where you're at, but they're ahead of you where you want to be. And that's what helps you grow. And that's what keeps that positive reinforcement coming in. Okay. You get the encouragement without even being said, verbalized, just by seeing it, just by seeing other people experiencing it, motivates you and gives you that extra drive. Great advice. Great advice. Thank you. Okay. Here's a question for you. What would you say to somebody who says, Francesca, this is all just wonderful, but I'm just too old to start something new. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh my goodness. You are talking my language. I okay. <laughs> I think the listeners will see that. I didn't know what you were going to ask me. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, yes. Oh, I feel, okay. I believe that it is our responsibility. The older we get, the bigger the responsibility uh, we have to be an example, not just to better ourselves, but to also to be an example to the newer generation. Because I don't like, just think about it. When you were younger, right? When we were younger, like, I don't want to be old. We dreaded being old because we didn't want to be like, oh, but they're old. Right. I want the new generation. I want the younger people look at us who are older. Like, I speak for myself. I'm older. <laughs> And, you know, I'm past my 50s. I'm in my 50s. And I want the young generation to say, I want to be like her when I get old. I like that. I want to achieve what she does. Man, she doesn't stop. She's the one who inspires me. I want to inspire the young generation, not just our generation. <laughs> I just love that. You said that I'm getting chills because yeah. you're so right. As people, as humanoids, we yeah. look to that next generation and we go, what are they doing? What are they doing? And we do, it's our responsibility really. Yes. To, yes. Yes. And we're not dead. Right. Why slow down now? Like we have, but the thing is, this is the time, the older we get, the more experience we have, the more wisdom we have. We have so much to share. That is what would be selfish right. is not to share and not to give, not to give back with all that we have learned and all that we have experienced. There's so many different ways of doing that. It doesn't have to be through a business, right? But that's just the way, that's how I feel. Anyway, so when you ask me that, I'm like, oh my goodness, no one's ever asked me that. And I've been, I've been so wanting to talk about this. So thank you for asking that. Yes, and thank you for answering it because now I'm inspired too as a woman in her 50s, late 50s. Oh, awesome. actually. So yeah, you really validated that for me. It is important for my daughter and for other young people to look at me and say, what she's doing is what I want to be doing, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> very inspirational. You, you, you are very good at inspiring. So <laughs> you're in the right field here. Okay. Let's see. Okay, here's, here's another one along the lines of inspiration. You talk about valuing yourself and your abilities in one of your blog posts, which I just loved. Um, it's called, Are You Performing Yourself Into Poverty? And I, I would like to encourage everybody listening to this, whether you're a dancer or not, because that article is about dancing. Go read that blog post because that metaphorically applies to everything you do in life, right? Here's my question for you. How can people learn to value themselves and their skill sets and their abilities and just the person of who they are? What's a good couple few first steps or what, what can you speak into that for a minute? Yeah, how do you value yourself? Well, for, first of all, like if you know, you have to know if you're doing something, you're offering something. You're doing it because you already think it is a value because you wouldn't give something out that is not. Right. Where, where, when I wrote that article, um, I, I did write it for the dance industry. However, I had so much feedback uh, from all kinds of industries, like you said, from photographers, from hula hoopers, <laughs> from, <laughs> yeah. all, all, all kinds, all kinds of uh, fields. And, um, and it's, I think what it is, is that other people sometimes don't put the value on what we are doing and what we're offering. And, and then it, 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 it makes us doubt that maybe what we have is not valuable. 
But really what it, what it boils down to is about how you offer it and how you position it. So that's where the business side comes in. Okay. <laughs> right. So if you are offering something and your potential customer or someone uh, wants your services or your product but doesn't want to pay for it, then you haven't presented it in such a way that it seems valuable to them or that or they don't understand it. Um, for example, when I used to perform, I don't perform anymore, but when I used to perform, I, I charged double than any other dancer. And, and that was the common, the common reaction would be, oh, but you're so much more expensive. And I would say, well, this is what I offer. I would list all that I'd offer. You're more than happy to go with someone else. And you know what? More times than not, they would come and hire me. And the few times that, uh, the few people that wouldn't, they would actually um, contact me later and say, we regretted hiring the person we should have gone with you. So, you know, wow. so it, it, it all depends on how you position, uh, position yourself. So if you offer more value than what, uh, what the actual price is, <laughs> then it makes a difference and you feel better. So that's how you, that's how you build your own value is position in such a way that people understand how much value you're really, really offering and then, and make yourself different from the rest. So that's also part of, you know, like how are you different from the others? Why is yours more valuable than others? So you have to, um, you have to make that very clear and very distinct. See, I think that a lot of people do have value like you did as a dancer and you knew it. Mm -hmm. You knew that you were good at your craft and you worked on that. How, what, what for those people who don't see that in themselves and they do allow others to value them. Like you almost said, Hey, don't, don't allow other people to put a value on what you do because they don't understand what it is that you do. You're the one who values it. And then you present your price to them. That's a great question. I do. I, I was not the best performer out there yet. I charge more. So the question is not whether uh, you are better than anybody else. The question is, what is that one thing, one side, one thing about you that makes you different and better than, because you can't be better at everything, but we're all different. We're all unique. We're, we all have that something that nobody else has, right? So it's about working on that okay. Okay. and pointing that out. Okay, and and showing that and push and highlighting that. Yeah, like for example, just if, if we go back to the performing part, like some performers may not be, um, they may not be the best dancers technically. They may not be the most uh, mesmerizing performers, but they may they may be the funniest and the most entertaining. Okay, and that's what they could, for example emphasize on you want your crowd to be entertained you want them to laugh till their belly la uh, hurts you know then that's that's where that value is because maybe that particular client is looking for something like that versus another client might be looking for something different and not everybody is going to be not everybody's going to uh, need or be interested in what you have to offer but that doesn't mean you don't you don't have something valuable to offer Absolutely. I love this. Thank you for this answer. It's just, it's, it just so, so resonates. Yeah. And in and, and listening to it, I want to encourage listeners, if you don't know what that specific something is, or you can't put your finger on it, go ask people you trust. Mm -hmm. Yes. What, what is it about me that's unique and what do you value? Um, there's nothing wrong with asking that question. Okay. Whew, this is a great interview. I feel very connected to you. Um, Okay, here's a question in general. Um, you have had many life experiences and situations. You've got an interesting history um, that forced you to face and conquer fear. Can you talk about some of them or something come to mind that you, on that, along the lines of how did you conquer that? And, and Go ahead. It's probably um, a series of little fears that... Uh, when the big things came on, I guess maybe I had already practiced enough. <laughs> okay. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. So this is just coming to mind at the moment. So I guess maybe that's what it is. But I mean, I grew up in, I grew up in Sicily. 
back in Italy and my family extremely protective back then. Uh, so protective that when I ended up getting married, um, you know, my first marriage, I didn't even know how to go to the bank. And I remember we had received, uh, a, you know, gifts, monetary gifts, and my ex-husband asked me to go deposit it at the bank. And I was completely terrified, absolutely terrified of walking in the bank and looking stupid. Okay. Really. So that, you know, that's a minor fear for most people. Like it's really shouldn't be fearful, but I was terrified. Like I had never done banking. And here, <laughs> so in my you know my twenties, and I had never done banking for myself. So there's a lot of things. Um, How did you handle that one particular situation? I mean, yes, it does. Some people may say that's minor, yeah. but it really was major enough to where it 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 almost prevented you from doing what you needed to do just in life in general. So well, I did it. Okay. Uh, I, I, I remember walking to the bank because the idea was that I was supposed to put the money into bonds. I never even heard what the word bonds meant. Wow. No idea. And English is my second language, so it didn't really help. So at the time, I thought, okay, if I start sounding stupid, I'll, start, I'll tell them I speak Italian that, that I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> so this was back in Toronto, and I remember I went to the bank, and I asked to, I, I, did, I said exactly what my ex told me to say. So I, I, and then the lady at the counter responded with something. I had no idea what she, what she meant. And I, and I looked at her and I said, I'm sorry, English is not my first language. I speak Italian. And she goes, oh, I'm Italian too. And she starts speaking oh. Italian, which totally made it worse. Yes, it blew your whole cover. So yeah, okay, there goes that strategy out the window. But you know what? In the end, I survived. Okay. I didn't die. Right. And it was like, okay, so it was embarrassing, you know, but okay, it's another day that you learn something, right? Um, and that's what I've pretty much learned. I mean, you heard it from my interview. I believe it's the interviews I listened to. You know, at one point I lost everything. I was going through a divorce and um, lost a job, lost the home, everything in 10 days. and. And you, you, you get to a point sometimes, sometimes I find that the biggest fear is almost easier to deal with than the smaller ones. Okay. Can you say what you, why or how? Um, because I, if, I find that when, the, the, when it's something small, that it's not a huge thing, it's easy to just backtrack and say, oh, and just kind of step away from it because it's not that big of a deal. You can get um, by without dealing with it. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. And... Um, but, but when it's something, something big, you have to make that decision. And you know that if you don't make that decision and if you don't go forward, you already know what it's going to look like if you don't. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so you kind of, okay, okay, you may not know what it's going to look like, but you know what it's going to look like if you don't go and face that fear. So, um, so when I lost my home, I knew I did not want to be on welfare. I knew that was not what I, the example I wanted to set for my daughter. Right. So, um, yeah, so but, go yeah. ahead. No. So you, you actually opened a dance studio at that point in time. I did. I did. Um, it was the one skill I had. I knew how to dance and I had, um, I had helped other instructors and I couldn't find work at the time because it was around nine 11. By the time my unemployment insurance ran out, <laughs> it seemed like everywhere I went for a job interview, I was not getting work. And then my unemployment insurance was running out, 9-11 happened, and now nobody was even interviewing anymore. So I decided, well, I'm not going to go on welfare, and um, I will do whatever I can, and this is one thing I know how to do, and I'm going to do it. So Fantastic. Yeah. So, tell, so that was, dance was then the catalyst that empowered you to find strength and to move forward. You had that skill. I had this skill. I also had, um, I knew that, because it was teaching dance to, uh, to grown-ups. It was dance for adult beginners. And there really were no dance students that were doing that uh, at the time. And because I learned dance as an adult, I totally relate. And I wanted to put it out there and help other, uh, other people that wanted to learn who had thought that they had missed out because they didn't go to dance school when they were kids. So 
that is exactly how my life was too. So I really appreciate you. Yeah. <laughs> I want so to get to do. tap. So I'm looking to do that as an adult. Oh, awesome. so, I think it's very important for adults to have that opportunity to learn dance and to dance regularly if they mm -hmm. like to. So I just love your business plan. Oh, but tell us what happened because what happened when you opened that studio the first day? Did you oh, have nobody showed up? Yeah. <laughs> You know, oh my goodness, it was so hard. Like, because I had worked, I had taken, um, at the end of uh, my unemployment and insurance running out, I took a self-employment program. So I was, you know, I wrote the whole business plan, you know, studied about marketing, studied about sales, studied how to, you know, create processes and systems, the whole thing. And I did my whole marketing according to plan. And so I thought I'll open my doors, like, here for a class. And... No one that thing. Literally, literally, I sat there in the middle of the studio going, okay. Oh, boy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so it was a pretty sad. Uh, at the same time, it was a good thing because it really gave me a major kick uh, or jolt into thinking it has to be done differently. Uh, this doesn't work. This way it doesn't work. So you took this as feedback rather than shrinking and covering up under the covers and running away with your fear. You accepted it as feedback. And then what happened from there? Well, I made a decision that this was my motto. It was there is do or do. There is no die. So right. it had to work. I just had to figure out how to make it work. Uh, I knew it would. I, I knew it deep in my gut that um, that it would work, that I just had to figure out how to, to get the people in the door at the time. You believed in it. And you oh, believed yeah, I did. Yourself. I did. I knew I had a market, even though, like I said, like even my business advisors, when I took the program, they were not really believing in this as a, you know, a, a good business plan. But like I, I remember even going out through a panel of entrepreneurs presenting my business plan so that I could continue on with the, the self-employment program and where one of, one of the people in the panel said, this will never work. Here we are back to that place where you said, don't let other people decide or value you. Go ahead. Yeah. And he said, this will never work. You're, 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 you're dreaming. You're making castles in the air. Like this is never going to work. You're never going to get enough clients. You, it's, it's not even going to last a few months. And, and I said, well, that's your opinion. Wow. You know, that, that, that's just your opinion and that's okay you know um, well there you go <laughs> because Francesca tell us tell the listeners what did actually happen with that business I, I, I broke through six figures within the first 18 months oh that is amazing and then it grew into multiple six figures oh my gosh so yeah yeah it did you know and this was in an industry that people didn't think it it would work but it did but you trusted your gut you knew yourself and you went forward and that it just there's so much bravery and courageousness mm -hmm. um that you exhibit and that's why i'm so delighted to have you on this series because i want other people to see that yes yes it's possible so thank you but if i may add i mean i didn't just open the studio and then that was it i mean i continued working on learning about business i I trained constantly. So I spent, I would say, about 30% of my time on learning okay. about business and on self-development. Right. And doing it quickly because your studio was already open and you needed to get people in the door. Yeah. So how much personal growth went on for you during that time of pressure? I think it was, I don't know, it's a thousand times. A thousand <laughs> times. Said, oh, I, I can't put a number to it. Like it's, I mean, you have to think of someone who's completely insecure. I had every insecurity in the face of this. I mean, I had no education. I mean, like uh, I didn't have a business background. The only background I had was this little course that I took on, you know, self-employment. And um, I... I didn't have the experience. I had never really been exposed to how 
it all worked. Even the, even some of the teachers that I helped before when I was doing the dance, uh, I knew nothing about business and I, they were struggling. Right. <laughs> so they were not good examples to me because they were not making uh, enough money. They struggled in getting students and they were using me to help them get more students. So, um, so you were uh, responsible for it. Incredible. Go, okay, incredible growth. Yeah. But, you know, the bottom line that I'm hearing in this story is that you can't just sit around and dream your dreams and prepare and prepare and prepare and then do them. You have to do them, and it's in the doing that you learn what you need to learn to make them work. Yes, we get into this perfectionism, and I think what, what helped me was the, the desperation because I had to bring income. I had no income. And I had to support my daughter. I had to feed myself. We had to, you know, pay rents. We had to, you know, regular expenses. And it, it was, it was a, it ha I have to do something. I can't just keep preparing. It was, yes, you're right. You have to implement. Even if you don't feel ready, start implementing whatever's ready. Um, but got to keep moving. You, you can't start. You can't, you can't, nothing happens if you just keep preparing and never launching and never actually doing I love that word implement yeah. start implementing yeah start working it yes I love that yes you are clearly the right person to help people develop their businesses that's for sure um, you know in fact before we move on a little bit more um, at one point in your life and I learned this from your interview with Louise if, yes and that's out there on your, you can connect to that on the website. Great interview. Um, you felt like you wanted to take to your, almost take your own life. You were just to the point where, wow, I mean, that's where this road took you at one point. And that, it, and that people can feel that way when you're in this process. But you didn't, and that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm sure that all the people that you're helping are glad you're here too. <laughs> Um, what would you say to those who right now who are listening and maybe feeling that hopeless about life? Rock bottom, use rock bottom as your bouncing spot. Um, even if it feels, because the, the way it felt for me, and maybe the people who are listening, if they are in that situation, uh, it literally felt like the ground I know it's a metaphor you, we hear people say about it, but I really felt like there was no ground and I was just falling in this deep, dark hole. And it physically felt like that. It wasn't just mental. It wow. physically felt I was just sinking into this black hole. And, and it felt like there was nothing. What, what, why it's not worth the pain. That's where I was at. This is not worth the pain. Uh, if, if, if this is anyone listening that is feeling that way, I can, I am the testimony that this can be turned around and there is a positive side to it. And just embrace the moment. It's not the time to go because especially because you are in this point, you have so much more to offer and you can have so many people just because you are the one at one point that will be able to help pull up someone else from that same hole. If we all go in that hole, there'd be no, a lot of us would be gone. <laughs> well, I'm gone, right? <laughs> and I think, I mean, I think you can become really powerful if you think that, just know that it, it's not permanent. It's not a permanent place. And then when I say that, it's not like, okay, I make the decision, I'm not gonna be depressed and then boom, and then, and then you're happy. No, it doesn't work like that. It, it, it takes rebuilding, but it, you have to make that decision. Okay. It really is about making that decision at that point and say, no, this is not where I'm going. I will change this around. I will find help. And that also helps. So that's what I did. I did seek help. Okay. Uh, so I get a counselor and um, it is absolutely imperative to get help. Okay. And to be willing to do the work to, to, to overcome whatever it is feeling so big that so pressing right so yeah there there's uh rock bottom it's a good bouncing place okay i love we'll it go there too often but it's a good place to bounce from wonderful wonderful okay 
you also said another thing that I really loved. Um, you have to grow. You you have to always grow. Um, finding gifts in the challenges that you that you face. Mm -hmm. How can people see gifts in something that is like? Lesson. There's a lesson. There are lessons, um, and then there's a the gift in the lesson. Sometimes we don't see it right away. Sometimes we don't see it right away. Sometimes it's just but it's just the knowing that whatever is happening at this moment, whatever the challenge is. If you really pay attention, you embrace it. Because embrace that moment. It may not be what we're liking right now. It may not, you know, life may not be offering what we, <laughs> it's not what we bargain for sometimes, right? Um, but if you, I lost my train of thought, sorry. <laughs> we're talking about finding gifts in the challenge. Yes. yes, if you embrace the moment and you pay attention, even if you don't see it at this particular moment, you can always reflect back later and you will eventually see that there was something there. There's always a lesson. There's always a gift. There's a gift in the lesson. So okay. um, there's a lesson in everything. We are being given a gift when we face a challenge. There is, and maybe yeah. multiple gifts in a challenge. I'm not saying that we should look for the challenges. <laughs> right, right. But, but, when they do, <laughs> but when they when they're like, oh, this is not the challenge. I mean, there's some good challenges, but those challenges are not so good, so pleasant. Uh, just know that, yeah. If you, I think if you, I personally find that if there is a big challenge and I try to look at what can I learn from this and how can we, how can I turn this into a positive, it lessens the weight of the challenge and makes it easier. And then eventually I see the lesson, whether I see it right away or later. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I agree with you. Some challenges we don't sign on for. So yeah. So you see, because yeah. we want self growth. Yeah. And. Um, we have only ourselves to blame. I, <laughs> I don't want to say blame, but you know, yeah. Okay. Here's something else I want to ask you. You're getting ready to write a book. Um, and believe me, that's going to be a good book because just your personal history, you know, interwoven with the things that you've done in life and your accomplishments is going to make for some really good reading. Aside from the fact that I'm sure it's going to be very helpful. Um, you said that you've got the, you know, you've got the materials, they're in there. Um, I don't know if you've written notes down or anything, but you haven't yet started the book. And I'm wondering, and I got to ask you this, could fear be the culprit that's holding you back here? I've actually started the book. Oh, yay! <laughs> so since, since that interview, I have started the book. It's almost halfway there. Wow. So, yeah. So the book is in process. So how did you feel after you got actually made that start? You actually started that thing. What did anything shift? Was it a big positive shift or did you say to yourself, Oh gosh, now I have a really big project. I want to get it out there, but I do feel overwhelmed. What? Okay. Well, I guess I do feel overwhelmed because writing is not my gift. Okay. <laughs> not my forte. So if we're going to talk about challenges, writing the book is a challenge. Having ADHD like <laughs> maximized is makes it even more of a challenge. Uh, very hard to focus in writing. Uh, so I'm actually very proud of myself. I give myself better back to having come this far and, and writing it. Of course, it needs a lot of work and going back and re-editing and all that. But I'm um, yeah. So that's one of my challenges right now. Okay. <laughs> have you been Have you been able to spot the gifts in this one yet? In this challenge. Oh, I have a lot. I have a lot to say. Uh, no, I have not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I will. I will. Well, oh, well, my yeah. guess is that if I can write a book, anybody can. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. And it's yeah. getting more and more common where people are putting pen to paper and telling their stories. I think it's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. I think it's really wonderful. Okay. Well, I would like to um, leave it up to you if there's anything else that you want to tell the listeners. Um, before we talk about where they can find you because if they are if part of their dream is running a business They're going to want to find you and they're going to want to look at your website and things So is there anything that you'd like to leave the listeners with today? Yeah, I don't know who your listeners are but um, if They are considering entrepreneurship or if they are, or if they are entrepreneurs um, I'd love to uh, give a complimentary 20 minute session so they can find me on my website and um 
No, um, I'm easy to find, and I my mission is to help. My mission is to help others. So, uh, well, and you can achieve it. I, I, I believe. I believe that everyone should have their own business at one point in their life. Okay. I believe that's my belief. Yes, and I believe that a lot of the listeners for this summit do want that in their lives. They want to have something of their own, and they are facing fear. So who better than to help them than you? And thank you for your free gift offer. That's very generous. And um, the website will, of course, be you know, visible on this page. But go ahead and tell us, should they contact you on the confidence? They, no, they can, well, they can do it through there. Uh, they can also do it through my website, which is francescaanastasi.com. But it'll be easier if it's in the links, so okay. there's a spellings there. Uh, so just contact me and say I listened to the interview and I'd love to see you. Okay, and then one more thing. You've got a big event coming up in 2017. 2018, yes. 2018. Uh, yes. That, is that for women? You? Yes, yes, it is. So it's at the Magnificent You Women's Conference. Uh, when I did it in September, it was on personal development. And everybody's been asking me, when are you doing the next one? When are you doing the next one? So I thought, okay, I wasn't planning on doing another one, but now I said, okay, I will do another one. Uh, this one will be for women in business. So that will be the topic. So um, it'll be early 2018. It's literally the dates are pending on venue availability. So I've been going back and forth with the venue. I, I'm hoping to have that solidified in the next couple of weeks. So then I'll have the whole information and the whole content of the the of the site will be updated as well. So. That's exciting news. Yeah. Gonna be a, it's going to be a hit. Yes. So, Francesca, thank you for adding your voice to this summit. Very valuable information. We appreciate you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.